Welcome to Bosch's Technical Support on Demand video series. The DVAR IP 7800N Initial RAID Setup. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide a step-by-step -step process for adding drives to the DVAR IP 7800N recording appliance, which unlike its counterpart, the 7082-8HD comes with no storage drives. To understand the setup procedure, you must first understand the functional state in which you receive your 7800N. The recording appliance is equipped with an 80 gigabyte solid state drive which contains the device's operating system, BVMS, mobile video server service, VRM, and video streaming gateway. The appliance also contains a SATA DOM disk on module which contains restoration images of the device in its factory defaulted condition. The appliance performs RAID 5 via an internal LSI RAID controller card. The LSI controller card, when configured, will present all the drives in the device as a virtual drive to the operating system. The available size of your RAID array will vary based on the number and size of hard drives that you add to your 708000N. After receiving your appliance, physically install your hard drives. Boot the storage device. After booting, you should see a Bosch splash screen. After the Bosch splash screen, you will see the LSI boot process. Press Ctrl H throughout the boot process to access the LSI BIOS interface. After accessing the LSI BIOS interface, select the Start button. Once you select Start, the main LSI web BIOS page should load. From this page, you should see all the drives that you added as unconfigured or blue. Select the Configuration Wizard menu option on the left hand side of the page. From the Configuration Wizard page, ensure New Configuration is selected and then select Next. From the second page of the wizard, ensure the following are selected. Manual Configuration and Redundancy when possible. Select the Next tab. From the third page of the wizard, you will need to add all of the new drives to a drive group. Select all drives while holding the control key and then select the Add to Array button. After selecting Add to Array, all drives should appear on the right side of the menu under Drive Group 0. Select Accept DG. After accepting the disk group, you should see Drive Group 1 below Drive Group 0. Select the Next button. You should now see the Space Definition page. The Array with Free Space menu is on the left hand side and should show Drive Group 0 available. Select Add to Span. Drive Group 0 should now appear in the Span menu on the right hand side. Select the Next tab. On the following menu page, you will need to ensure the following settings are correct. RAID Level 5 Stripe Size 64 KB Access Policy Read Write Read policy, ahead. Write policy, always write back. This setting can impact performance. I.O. policy cached. Drive cache, no change. Disable BGI, no. And in select size, enter the amount shown for the R5 option below the right window. In this example, we have 2.725 terabytes available. Select accept. After selecting Accept, you will be asked, are you sure you want to select Always Write Back mode? Select Yes. After selecting Yes, you will be brought back to the Virtual Drive Definition menu page. Select the Next button. You should now see VD0 or Virtual Drive 0 in the Virtual Drive Definition menu. Select Accept. You will now be presented with two options. Save this configuration, select Yes and all data on the virtual drives will be lost. Want to initialize? Select Yes. On the last menu page of virtual drives, select VD0, then select Fast Initialize. Select Go. After the screen refreshes, select Home. The WebBIOS homepage should appear and look similar to what is pictured here. Select Exit. You will be prompted again to exit. Select Exit and reboot the appliance. Our next step is to restore an image using our SATA DOM. 
This will prepare your RAID array with virtual hard disks that act as iSCSI targets for VRM. At this point, your RAID array is unpartitioned and unformatted. During the reboot process of your appliance, press and hold the F11 key. If you are prompted to select between an SSD or a SATA boot option, select SATA. A Windows shell should load, as shown here. Once Windows is loaded, you should be presented with a Bosch System Recovery Environment splash screen, as seen here. Select Initial to Factory Image. All data will be deleted. The re-imaging process may take several minutes. Be patient. After the process, you should receive a message saying that it was a success. Do you want to restart your system? Select Yes. After rebooting, you will be taken to a Windows Server 2008 setup menu. Select your language, your country, region, time, currency, and keyboard layout. Then you'll accept the license agreement and select Start. After selecting Start, you'll be prompted to log in. The default login ID and password for this device is BVR Admin with the password of WSS4Bosch. These need to be treated as case sensitive. After entering your credentials, Windows will inform you that you need to change your password before entering Windows for the first time. Select OK. And for support reasons, enter the same credentials that you entered the first time. Select the next arrow. You should receive confirmation that your password was successfully changed. At this point, the appliance should reboot. Upon reboot, you will be taken directly to a kiosk menu. Here, you can select the Quick Configuration Wizard to configure your recording appliance. Select the wizard icon, which is circled, to proceed. The wizard is covered in a later module. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you. Bosch. Invented for life.